In the meantime, though, let's talk about the impact of the escalation with Iran on the defense sector. Joining us right now is Sheila Kayalu. She is Jeffrey's aerospace and defense analyst. And uh, Sheila, the markets overall showing some pretty big declines this morning. But if you look at Raytheon, for example, that stock's indicated higher this morning. What, what does a potential escalation like this mean for the defense sector? Yeah, so I think the defense threat is pretty broad. You see Iran's efforts to destabilize the Middle East. ISIS still poses a threat. We hear about China all the time. China's military efforts, their military spending has tripled to $250 billion over the last two decades. There's Russia and its cyber threat. So the threat is global. Our view is overall we're not into ground wars and munitions and the Mideast kind of begs on that versus China and Russia tend to be cyber and space focused. So, you know, we think we don't know whether you'll get a one day pop like you did with Saudi Aramco in September, but generally both positively for the defense names. Raytheon is the most exposed with 30 percent Middle East and 5 percent of that is to Saudi. So what 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 happens in terms of defense spending? What have you been modeling on this? What do you think? Uh, will we see an increase in spending based on some of these issues? So the budget is set to be $738 billion, and that's a level that Secretary, Defense Secretary Mark Esper and President Trump have said is a decent level. But we have to bear in mind, although investors are only anticipating that to be 3 percent growth, that's up 16 percent since uh, President Trump started. When he took over the budget, it was around $650 billion in 2016. So it's up off a big amount, and this is an election year in 2020, of course. Defense tends to outperform the S&P in defense uh, in election years every year, but in 2012. What, uh, what other names should we be watching? You mentioned Raytheon already. Raytheon's one name. Northrop has exposure. We like it because it has exposure to space. That's 30 percent. And we're big uh, on space for 2020, as we think that's an area of growth when you think about the next plays. We don't we're not big on munitions and ground wars. And the next Iraq is not going to be Iraq. It's going to be in space. So uh, that's a name we favor as well as LHS. Until yesterday. Until yesterday. But I think, you know, going back to my starting comments, the defense threat is broad and it's very complicated. You see you guys were talking about Iran's relationship with China mm -hmm. and China's spending and where's China spending China spending in space. Yeah. Just thinking of all the different ramifications of uh, of this and we, we hear about a lot of employees the younger employees mad that their tech firms are doing any business at all with with the Defense Department and then something like this comes about and I you know from my point of view the world's a dangerous place and I think that's that's kind of an insane viewpoint to take that that we don't need to stay strong or we don't need to to bolster our defenses even if it's Patriot missiles but that, that which brings me then to the notion of what will what would millennials think of of a of a conflict in the Middle East we wonder about what the U whether the US public is war weary which we were after yes. Afghan, uh, are. Afghanistan and, and, and Iraq. We About think President Trump been. just pulled out of Syria. He wants to get out of there. Once, but suddenly this brings us, we get pulled back in. And I'm just wondering how long would the U.S. public, given its makeup now, be behind some type of... Uh, Extended action. Yeah. Or How long would you have the, the, you know, right now it seems like you have at least a little while to... But if it, it was extended or... Depends on how it escalates. If it spread. What do you I think? think? It, I think it changes, too. And going back to your point on millennials, we saw IT services stocks. So those are the Booz Allen, Lidoses of the world, up 80% last year in our group. And that's because the new threat, I think, is more technology. I, I, I stick to that view. I don't think it's ground wars and uh, soldiers fighting each other. And I think that's the defense secretary's view as well.